Hello and welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about something that has really um, ticked me off, really triggered me, as my daughters would say, and that's lies that doctors tell diabetics. Um, a diabetic patient really has no choice other than to trust their doctor and the advice he gives, and I think it's really atrocious, really egregious when a doctor either unknowingly or unthinkingly or just lazily gives a diabetic patient advice that can actually harm their health. I call these things medical lies, and we'll talk about that more uh, in, later on in the video. But first, take one second, hit the subscribe button, please. That helps me spread this word to more diabetics and more people with chronic disease that can actually fix their chronic disease, cure their chronic disease, if they have this information. So please take one second and hit the subscribe button and maybe even hit that little bell so you get notifications every time I get a bright idea. Okay, now let's talk about lies that diabetics are told by their doctor every day. Number one, all things in moderation. Now on the surface, this sounds like very sage, uh, common sense advice, all things in moderation. We've all heard that a million times, but when it comes to diabetics and their diet, this is terrible information. This is terrible advice. Don't follow this. You should not eat or drink all things in moderation if you're a diabetic. If you're a diabetic, your number one goal is to keep your blood sugar within normal limits at all times and to keep your insulin levels in your bloodstream normal at all times. Anytime your blood sugar is above 140, you're doing permanent damage to all the little arteries in every part of your body, from your eyes to your brain to your heart and other more sensitive areas that we won't speak of. But anytime your blood sugar is above 140, you're doing damage that cannot be taken back. So all things in moderation is terrible advice. If your doctor's ever told you that, then you need to either have a talk with your doctor, try to train him, or maybe find a new doctor, okay? Number two, sorbitol won't raise your blood sugar and is a healthy uh, sugar substitute for diabetics. This is another unthinking thing that doctors tell their patients. Uh, organizations like the ADA in America, the Di Diabetic UK in the UK, and uh, the ADS in Australia, they, they they give their patients this advice. Oh yes, use sorbitol as a sweetener. Okay, that's terrible advice. Sorbitol, which is a sugar alcohol, is not, it's not an alcohol like you would think of alcohol. You're not gonna become inebriated if you eat it. But it is a modified sugar, okay? It does not have a glycemic index of zero. It will raise your blood sugar. It will raise your insulin level. It also, your, your body has to metabolize it as, a, as an alcohol. And so your liver gets involved and, and it has to work to do this as well. Sorbitol is not a good sweeten, sweetener substitute for diabetics. Don't eat that. Don't drink that. If you see something with the ADA or the ADS seal of approval on it, you probably ought to avoid that if you're a diabetic. That's probably the best medical advice I can give you about sorbitol, okay? Not a good sweetener substitute. Next is, if you take diabetes medications and or insulin, you'll decrease your risk of diabetic complications. Uh, Dr. Jason Fung, a, a preeminent nephrologist, has spoken about this. Dr. William Davis, a preeminent cardiologist, has spoken about this. This is patently false and has been proven as such by several very, very large, well-done medical studies. Doctors basically designed huge medical studies to try to prove to their patients, if you'll follow my advice very strictly and control your blood sugar not by diet, but by using your medications and being very aggressive with your medications and insulin therapy, then you'll decrease your risk of diabetic complications. And what these huge studies found was actually the that the, 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 no matter how tightly you controlled the your your blood sugar and your your insulin levels with medication with insulin, you still had the diabetic complications. And actually, all cause mortality went up when you controlled blood sugar too tightly with medications. So that's terrible advice. What you have to control very tightly as a diabetic is your diet. That's what you have to control very tightly. Don't add, keep adding diabetic medications and keep and start insulin and in, keep increasing your insulin to get your blood sugar down thinking you're doing yourself a favor because you are not. Your diabetic complication rate is just as high. 
And if your doctor disagrees with that, tell him to, to Facebook me and I'll send him a link to the study so he can get up to date on that. Next is uh, you need carbs. You, you need carbohydrates. Somehow there's an essential number of grams of carbohydrates you need a day as a diabetic. Now, this is completely and utterly false for all human beings, including diabetics. Um, Dr. Bernstein has a book on this. He's a type 1 diabetic who's also a physician who's written a book about this. He's been eating a ketogenic diet for decades, and he has not died. And he also has very little in the way of diabetic complications. So maybe you should check out Dr. Bernstein's book about diabetes and how to manage it with diet and not with lots of medications. But eating more carbs, eating whole grain, eating um, nutrient-dense carbs, all that is faulty advice. And if your doctor's ever told you any of those things, you need to have a chat with your doctor. Maybe give him a link to this YouTube video. I don't know. But that's not good advice. You don't need carbs. Now, there are essential fatty acids that you'll find in fats that you absolutely need as a human being or you will die. There are essential amino acids found in proteins that as a human being, you absolutely need those. And if you don't get them for long enough, you will die. There are no essential sugars. There are no essential starches. There are no essential carbs. There is no minimum amount of carbohydrates you need to eat every day uh, to stay healthy and stay alive. People have eaten ketogenic for decades and are thriving and flourishing and, and are healthy. That's a myth. And doctors need to stop telling that medical lie to their patients. Uh, the next lie is that type 2 is a chronic progressive disease. and You can't do anything about it. If you have type 2 diabetes, then you're, that's it. You just have a chronic progressive medical disease. And you can try your best to control it with lots of medications and maybe even insulin. But in the end, you'll succumb to all the complications of your diabetes and die from that. That's bunk. That is a lie. Okay, if you have type 2 diabetes, you can absolutely, when you are finished with this video today, you can start educating yourself and you can take charge of your type 2 diabetes. You can make it, you can improve it so much and maybe even cure it by your diet, by your lifestyle, not by the medications you'll get from your doctor, definitely not by the insulin you might get from your doctor, but by fixing your diet you'll fix your diabetes, okay? That's an absolute fact. And if your doctor disagrees with that, maybe you could uh, gift him a copy of my new book, which I'll talk about later on in the video, for Christmas. I don't know. Christmas is coming up. So the last lie that I want to talk about that, that diabetics are, are told by their doctors every day all across this country and all across the world is that they should eat many servings of whole grain bread and pasta, that that will help them keep their diabetes in check, that'll help, help them keep their blood sugar under control. And this is just the craziest lie of all, and I saved it for last for that very reason, what in the world are you thinking, doctors? And can you tell I'm a little upset by this, watchers? It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous to tell a diabetic, type 1 or type 2, oh, you should eat many servings of whole grain every day. It's, it's ridiculous, okay? You don't need to eat any servings of whole grains a day. Now, if you're a brittle diabetic or you're a type 1 diabetic, I'm not telling you to stop any medications, and I'm not telling you to drastically change your diet right now. If you're a type 1 diabetic, you'll have to slowly change your diet, okay? You can't do it overnight. Get a copy of Dr. Bernstein's book and follow it, and you'll be able to re reduce your chances of complications from your type 1 diabetes tremendously, and you'll have a better life. Your neuropathy will get better. Your vision might even get better. All these things can get better, even if you're a type 1 diabetic. But please don't make any drastic changes without reading Dr. Bernstein's book and without talking to your doctor. Or if he won't talk to you about it, then find a new doctor who will. Whole grain is not good for any human, much less a diabetic. So stop telling your patients that, doctors. And patients, if your doctor tells you that, then you either need to get up and walk out, or if you really like your doctor, maybe uh, get him a copy of Dr. Bernstein's book or a copy of my book and say, hey, dude, if you want to keep being my doctor, you're going to have to get up to date. Now, if you guys enjoyed this, please say, take a second and share it on social media because you have friends and family who are diabetics who are being told these medical lies every day by their doctor, by their dietitian, by their nutritionist, 
They deserve better. They deserve to know the truth. Oh, and I, I wanted to tell you, by the way, I, my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, is currently a bestseller on Amazon. I'm not even sure what's going on there, but if you want to pick up a copy of this, I'll leave a link down below. And I want you guys to all give me a comment. If you're a diabetic, tell me what medical advice you've gotten from your doctor that was, that was just a flat out lie that either because he was being lazy or he just didn't know any better, he gave you faulty medical advice that could have harmed your health. Leave me a comment below and I'll answer every comment like I always do. I love it when I get your comments. Okay guys, that's it. I'm gonna try to take a breath and calm down and I'll see you next time.